Hi, I'm Dr. Mary Marcotte, and today I'm going to talk to you about upper respiratory disease in cats in both the shelter and rescue environment. The most important thing that we can do um, is obviously prevention. Uh, that is so much easier to prevent the disease from occurring than it is to treat it once it's there. And that includes vaccine protocols, having good sanitation and husbandry. And then the most important factor is uh, not having overcrowding conditions because we know that overcrowding is probably the key component of upper respiratory outbreaks in shelters. There is a lot of information about different ways to prevent the disease, but today what I want to talk to you about is treating both the individual once they have an infection and containing it so that it doesn't spread to the healthy animals around them. Um, so we've all seen what this looks like and usually it starts with sneezing. It could just be sneezing or we see them with the squinty eyes and uh, maybe a little bit of runniness from the eyes. Uh, and unfortunately the first thing that most people want to do as soon as they see that they want to reach for an antibiotic and I want to encourage you to not do that to not grab the antibiotic as your first line of defense and I'm gonna explain why in a little bit there are other things that we can do to help a cat that has become sick that are actually more important far more important than an antibiotic the number one thing is going to be stress reduction that is huge. Uh, stress plays an enormous role in the general health and welfare of a cat. And think about, you know, any cat coming into the shelter, that, that is an ex incredibly stressful experience. Suddenly they're in a stainless steel cage that's small, there's noises and barking dogs. That in and of itself is extremely stressful for a cat. So anything we can do to minimize that for them is going to be crucial in keeping them healthy and helping them recover from disease once they have it. Okay, so the second thing we're gonna talk about is parasite control. Um, most shelters have a protocol in place for dewormers and when they're giving it, which is great. I do want you to keep in mind though that not every dewormer gets every single type of parasite there there is and especially when we're talking about intestinal parasites why is that important to this talk because any intestinal parasite is going to steal nutrients from the host from the cat and they need every nutrient every vitamin every mineral they can get to keep their immune system healthy so that they can not only fight off the disease but even prevent from getting it in the first place Okay, so the third thing that we're gonna talk about is hydration. Um, very, very important that cats always have access to clean water. Some cats, if they're kicking up litter, um, as soon as litter falls into the water bowl, it's contaminated and they're not gonna wanna drink that. So be mindful of that because if they are not getting the amount of water that they need, that sets them up for being more vulnerable to infection. Not only that, but if they are already sick, that can quickly make them even sicker than they were before. Ways that we can increase their hydration level are pretty simple. Uh, give them moist food. Give them moist food in addition to dry food if you don't have a lot of that, or give them just moist food. Kitties that are sick with an upper respiratory infection typically don't have the best sense of smell because they're clogged up in the nose. Uh, so you do want to try to pick a food that has a really um, I want to say pungent smell to it, but something like tuna fish or salmon that they can really sense the smell so that will stimulate their appetite. So then that leads us to the last thing, which is medications. And that's where we're going to talk about the use of antibiotics and when that is appropriate. Well, if you remember in the beginning, I talked about the importance of stress reduction and not just stress reduction for cats that are sick, but for all cats in general. And I'm going to tell you why in a second. When we look at upper respiratory disease, 90% of the time, 
it is because of a virus and 90% of it is actually caused by herpes virus very specifically. Now herpes typically causes what you see when you see the conjunctivitis in the eyes, when you see actually you see ocular ulcers too, that is um, almost always because of a herpes virus. And then of course you're gonna get the sneezing and the nasal discharge as well. The importance of this is that herpes is prevalent in the cat population in general. So what that means is a healthy cat could and probably is carrying a herpes virus. Here's the key. It comes out and causes disease when they are stressed. The duration of the disease is going to be less if we can control their stress. They are gonna be more equipped to fight it off and get better faster when the stress is reduced. So getting back to medications, the reason I say this is because since most of the time it is caused by a virus, an antibiotic is not going to work. So when do we decide to use it? Well, the first thing I would say is if you see colored discharge, if you see kind of a thick mucusy discharge that's yellow or greenish in color, that's the time that you're gonna probably wanna add on an antibiotic. And the one we're gonna talk about is doxycycline. The reason is because there are many different strains of bacteria that can be causing infection, but Doxycycline is probably the best one that covers the most of those bacteria, which is why I think that should be your go-to. Okay, so to summarize everything, the first thing obviously is stress reduction. That is going to be overarching the most important thing. Then the other things that are going to help the cat to recover quickly are going to be making sure that they have adequate water intake, they have good nutrition, they have parasite control, no parasites, and then the choice of the antibiotic. Um, thank you so much for your time and um, hope all your kitties are well.